In the book of Exodus, he looked at the children of Israel. It was the sixth month. And God said, because I'm speaking to you now, he said, this month is going to be to you the beginning of months. That means in the midst of the year, God said, what kickstarts a new season? It's not calendar, it's my word. Once I speak, it doesn't matter whether it's November, it can be the beginning of a new year. So that means the believer according to God is not subject to calendar months. So as opposed to calendar, God is a God of times and seasons. Your history is not just going to start in 2023. 2023 is just another latitude God is granting you so that it can extend to you the economy of the grace of God. So, so for the believer, 2023 doesn't exist in isolation. For you to optimize the year 2023, you must Abrahamize. So, so 2023 is not that year where you are having vision perpetually. I mean, you know, plans perpetually, paperwork perpetually, you must land it. It's amazing to be here today. Um, today we're going to be celebrating an amazing, amazing union. And this is one couple that's there's there's so much inspired me. I know PD is quite uncomfortable, right? <laughs> okay. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> Can we not do this? <laughs> wow. You know, I, I kind of came up with a, with a title for today. Um, let me see what I have, I have written out here. Eternal Vows, Exploring Nearly Two Decades of Love, isn't it? And we're going to be having, this is a special limited edition of PD Zarization and p <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So today we'll be having a sneak peek into their lives today. And I just want to encourage us to sort of chime in, every one of you. And it's a rare privilege to have them seated here today so we can glean from their wealth of experience and their knowledge. Right? All right. So before we make a start, and please, audience, you'll be helping me out today. I just want to ask you to kind of tell us about your journey. What has it been like? I know we've heard bits and bobs in the course of the message, in the course of the years, because a lot of us have been tied to you in some way or form. And by the way, I'm a friend of this house. You know, in, in a family, you have siblings, you have brothers, you have sisters, you have mom, dad, and me, I'm a friend, and I'm here to stay. Right, so give us, tell us about your journey. What has it been like? <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, it has been 24 years of 24 and a half years of being together. Uh, courted for five and a half years. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll make it 19 years wow. married. Wow. Married to the same man. Wow. Hallelujah. In a nutshell, the journey has been adventurous. If I'm to look for a word to describe it in totality. It has been adventurous because Pete is a man of adventure. Uh, Pete is a man of surprises. He's very apostolic. Surprises, let me define the surprises. Somebody say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> surprises in the sense that we've had to make a lot of moves in these 19 years. Coming to the UK was our fourth move, you know, and having to be married to a man who can be very spontaneous, that's why I said it, it's been very adventurous. You need to have faith for yourself. <laughs> So uh, it has really been adventurous. It has been a season of growth for me personally and understanding love in different faces. You know, that, that's how I'll sum it up. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I believe I am. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that's how it's been. Adventures, growth, and love in diverse faces. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much, Pimo. So we've heard Pimo's version. Uh, PD, please, do you want to chime in? <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. 
because this is uh, some kind of Spanish inquisition now. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please, guys, let me talk now. <laughs> After all, you guys have put me on hot seats now. Well, um, what I'll just say is that thank you very much, Pastor Murray, for being a great wife. And uh, looking at the last 19 years, you have made it easy to love you. you you've, been a, you've been a very different woman, full of wisdom, full of understanding, and just making it easy for one to, to be a husband. Wow. No stress at all. As a matter of fact, like I usually say, once in a while I tell her, I say, but other couples fight. Let's fight now so that, <laughs> because it does appear our normal is not normal. Because <laughs> the normal thing you hear is, oh, they fight, they fight. Oh, they are fighting. Oh, they are fighting, they are keeping malice. Oh, the way they become strong guys when they fight. But we seem to just be expressing the opposite, where the home is just peaceful, wow. where your wife makes it easy for you to love, good marriage, good companionship, and just being there, taking care of the house, taking care of me, taking care of the family, and uh, doing and fulfilling the purposes of God. So it's been 19 years of love, loving, and loving kindness. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Wow. That was, that was a real life moment there. And, um, you know, your relationship is very organic, I would say. And there are no fluffs around it. There are no assumptions around it. What you see is what you get. There's a lot of, it's so realistic. It's so down to earth. And I think one of the nagging questions on a lot of single people watching right now might be, what factors did you consider? in making a choice for Pimo, you know, to say amongst all other women, I Charis feel sick. Among 10,000. <laughs> singles, be well, let, coming let down. Me, let, me, let me help the singles here. Yes. When I was an undergraduate at the University of Ibado, um, for those who are privileged to have attended the University of Ghana, because if, if, if you schooled in Nigeria and you didn't go to UI, <laughs> you went to lesson. You didn't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> so I became born again. So, you know, unlike a lot of people in the Gen Z generation and the millennials, the first thing you want to factor into your relationship in making a choice is Christ. Mm. Marriage is a relationship between two Christians, full stop. Once that Christian factor is there, you are caught in disaster. And it's just a question of time. It's going to explode. Because one of the reasons why Christ chose to perform his first miracle at a wedding is to show that the miracle of wedding is priority miracle for God. I mean, out of raising the dead, healing the sick, this is the son of God. He was going to perform his first miracle and he went to a wedding. What does that tell us? So once Christ is not in that wedding, it's just a question of time, the wine will finish. And the only one that can give you the kind of wine you want is not your husband, it's not your wife. It's Christ in you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. the hope of glory. Mm. So in making a choice, I always tell young people, look, no matter how modern a generation is, you cannot modernize the things of God. Mm. It is what it is. If Christ is not the factor that brought both of you together, and in that journey, you are not also, let's even say some other things brought you together. We're not even ruling out that fact. But can you also factor Christ into it? Because if Christ is not at the epicenter of it all, a time will come we are going to have challenges. No other factor on earth can answer those questions. It has to come from a source that is supernatural. It 
starts to come from a construct that is broader, that is deeper, and that reaches beyond uh, uh, both of you. And if you don't have that, it's just a question of time. So I know people have a lot of considerations. People have um, a lot of, um, what do we call that? How they make their choices. And I'm not here to I'll tell you how to make your choice, but I'm, I'm also gonna tell you to understand that if Christ is not at the center of it all, that might be um, an indication that there's gonna be a problem in the days to come. Mm. So the first thing I considered was Christ. And um, coincidentally, Pastor Molly was not the first person I loved. Mm. And uh, she, she's very aware of the story. So the first person, maybe the first person that loved me. <laughs> <laughs> Because before I even met her, two ladies had come to meet me that God told them I was their husband. <laughs> and all my life I've always been this type of guy that ladies are always saying. <laughs> so the moment I became born again, that was the first thing I had to deal with. I was like, no way, we're not doing this again. So I was just growing, I was just praying in tongues, and I was waiting for, because I kept on telling myself, I said, the first person I would date would be the person I'll marry. I, I, I know dating nowadays is something else. When boy meet girl, let's go to chicken, FS manga, <laughs> eat, and you are trying to find out whether that is the one. You see, some, some of these are anomalies that people call normal nowadays are the reasons why relationships are failing. You can't do this thing by the flesh. There's an element of your wife or your husband that only God can reveal to you. So without talking too much, all I'm saying is that it doesn't matter what other considerations uh, may be. The one important consideration in this quest is that you must have Christ at the center of it all. That means you must understand that this is a grand design by God. It was not the philosophy of man that created marriage. You know, it's just like, I was telling, um, um, I was having a conversation with uh, a lady. She wanted to have a child, but she, she doesn't want to marry. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, let's backtrack. Why did God make it impossible for you by yourself to have a child? Why must a guy be involved at any level, whether you're going to take his semen, I'm uh, going to do AI, artificial insemination, or whatever. I said, how come you can't just tell yourself that I want to be pregnant and you become pregnant? I said, you are trying to violate what God has created because if God had created it, want a child to come because of the coming together of a man and a woman, but you don't want a man, but you want a child. That means you want a product, but you don't want a process. Mm -hmm. So the same thing about marriage. God created marriage. It wasn't man's idea. So to try to run in outside of God is to be interested in the product, mm. but not in the process. Mm. But that process is a critical factor because you now find out when you have the product, just like you have a car, but you don't know how to drive it. That's it. Well, PD, I have, I have a follow-up question from what you've said. Um, because you were embedded in an environment where you had lots of God-fearing you know, yeah. they, they all had their visions all aligned, yeah. Yeah. you know. But why Pimo? Okay, why Pimo? Amongst all, all the God-fearing people, thank, why? Thank you for that. Before I met, I had a list of 10 people. I always, I, I always keep a list of 10. You see, I'm a nice guy. I don't go beyond 10. So, no, 10 possibilities. Written in, with pencil. Written with pencil. And... You, you know what happens on that? So, so when I started sensing that season, I'm like, okay, no problem. God, this is what I'm going to do with you. I'm just going to pray for these ladies generally. Hmm. No strings attached. Hmm. But I will have their name on a paper in pencil because these are, these are, these are possibilities. <laughs> but, but, but from time to time, I go back to my room and I erase some names immediately. <laughs> Especially after fellowship. We're having fellowship. Somebody will just say something. I'll just be like, oh, God. This cannot be on the list. <laughs> it raised immediately. And they don't know that I was doing that anyway because I never showed 
I never said to anyone there was a list. Hmm. So I went to fellowship. Hmm. Never met her, never seen her, didn't know anything about her. Because it was also a very big fellowship like this church. So I got to fellowship, and my associate then, Tune Okubote, walked up to me and he said, oh, pastor, you know, I was a young pastor then, a 17-year-old, 18. And he said, pastor, you know, uh, some of the fresh, uh, fresh students, uh, uh, we were preparing for our first anniversary, so we were selling tickets uh, for the first anniversary dinner. You know, all those things we used to do on campus at the time. It was just like, oh, a lot of these freshers sold a lot of tickets, even more than Staylight. Now, can we appreciate some of them? And I'm like, okay, do you have the list of those freshers? And he gave me the list, and her name was on the list. Wow. And I, I was calling people. I think she was like number five. I just called her. And as she was coming, she stood up from somewhere there, and she was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and the moment I called her name and she stood up and she was walking to the front, hmm. the Lord just said to me, that is your wife. Wow. <laughs> and it was years later I got to know as she stood up and she was coming, the Lord also said to her, that is your husband. Wow. And I acted as if I did not hear anything. Because I just looked at that. <laughs> so as she was coming, I just looked. That's why I said I the God factor is important. I just looked at her, and I was like, okay, no problem. But something happened that day. I got back home, and I tore the list. Hmm. I mean, that was the end of the list. But at the same time, I didn't go for her immediately. I knew. She knew. Both of us knew. And both of us did not talk to ourselves. In fact... I deliberately avoided her after fellowship. And I was just looking at her, okay, there is a way the world must become flesh. Mm. But the day I now got to know that something was building up that I could not deny, oh my God. was I was walking towards uh, Kuti Hall. That's the hall of residence in the University of Badum. And um, I just met a brother, Tayo, I still remember. And I'm like, Tayo, how are you doing? You know, of course, people see me on campus, oh, PD, how are you? I said, oh, where are you going that you are so, because it was rushing, it was out. Like, I want to go to India Hall. I want to go and see Maury. <laughs> the moment she said that, I just froze. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, why do you want to go and see her? <laughs> you, you could imagine, suddenly I became so protected. I was like, have you gone to see her before? <laughs> And that day, when I got to her, I just told myself, I said, look, look, <laughs> look, you are, you are, you are, something happened again. <laughs> Our fellowship members from home now came visiting. And they came to greet her, almost 13, 14 of them or there about, and they were all guys, mostly. So when those ones came again, I was looking at them, I said, all oh, these people. <laughs> I hope I'm not delaying too long. <laughs> and after, I, I still pushed that. I was like, no, it's not yet time. That even though I, I know this is going to be my wife, but I'm not going to push it. I'll wait for perfect timing in God. Yes, to answer Dr. Amarachi's questions, there were so many. I was blessed with a lot of wonderful ladies. And how I know they were all wonderful is that we're talking about a fellowship of over 500 people. We're talking about my social network, people I was connected with, even when not in fellowship, Christian sisters all around me, Christian loving people. Maybe you should be looking at a group of over a thousand people. And yet, how do I know it was a glorious company? None of us slept with ourselves. Hmm. Nobody was involved in premarital sex. It was all pure. We're all serving God. But again, I also knew that by the time I make an announcement that she's the one, there's going to be trouble. Because a lot of people are already positioning themselves to be the one. Uh, on the average, I used to receive about 10 warmers of food every week. Wow. Different people cooking for me, bringing food to my room. And uh, so food was not a problem. I just, and I knew why so many people were cooking. They were positioning themselves. So why are? Why are? Because Number one, God spoke to me that she was the one. Number two, 
We did not force it. Number three, I waited for it to materialize. And number four, I waited for a certain time where the Lord also prepared, prepared her. And by the time I asked her out, it was on a Saturday. By Tuesday, I got my answer. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, PD, for sharing. I mean, your, your marital um, story is a very unique one. It's a very unique one, but we'll come to a point. It's a very peculiar experience, and it's great to see that God was actually at the center of it all. Yeah. So, Pimo, what was your own side of the story? Because we've had PD's side of the story. What was your own side of the story? <laughs> I didn't have any list. I did not have any list. But I think the part I would just say, probably to kind of like encourage the single ones, was that. I got born again in secondary school shortly before leaving secondary school, uh, final year. And um, I was at home for about two years. Like Jam was jamming me, so mm. <laughs> we were both jamming ourselves. But then we had a fellowship back at home um, in the Anglican church I was attending. And um, I remember praying. I was a new believer, so I was praying and just... We'd had a few people around us, you know, I've seen a few marriages, young couples, and had a lot of stories like we hear today on social media. You know, when people say things like, ah, it's difficult to find a good guy, and da 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 I just said to God, it was just a very simple prayer. I honestly, my heart didn't even think God was really going to take that prayer seriously. I was like, Lord, it is only the person that is meant for me that should have the boldness to ask me out. It was a very simple question, a prayer request. But I think I wanted to save myself the whole stress of, is it you? Is it not you? Is it you? Is it not you? So I just said, Lord, only the person that is meant to be the one is the only one that will be bold enough. And I tell you the truth. I had a lot of guys around me. Mm. They were thronging. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. They were they, a lot. It was after he would say it, the moment he announced it, a lot of people that parrot for him in fellowship because mm. he gave a rule. That if you're 100 level, you cannot date. <laughs> the reason is that you just came into school, you're a fresher, settled down before these brothers would come out. Of course, he didn't ask me until the holiday between 100 and 200. Maybe we should add it to it that when you're doing your master's, you cannot date. <laughs> PD, master's. <laughs> so, you know, of course, I, I didn't know that a number of brothers were waiting for after holiday. Mm. But of course, PD cornered now. It was very, strategic. Very strategic. And by the, time we, by the time we came back to school, and they announced, we were like, ah, ah, no, 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 no. PD did fast one for us. Like, what was that? So that, I think that was one major factor for me, you know, uh, and that was one thing that made me know that, okay, this is the person. And uh, of course, to back that up, how God speaks to me. When yeah. God wants to give me an instruction or tell me something or any major decision I need to make in my life, he speaks to me through the word. Mm. It is clear. I just read the scripture and it is very clear. So that was the second confirmation for me. He gave me an exact word that was so clear, that was so precise. Wow. And that is what I've held on to till today. At that times when I feel like, where did you come from? What, <laughs> what are we doing together? Like, yeah, but then I go back to that word, you get me. So I think for me, that was just it. Of course, he was a pastor. And one thing I had to learn was to learn to know him, not just as Pastor Daly, but as Ayo Daly. Yeah. Because I'd always known him as Pastor Daly, you, wow. you get me. And he made that easy anyway. So it wasn't a Pastor Daly hmm. morning relationship. I first went in fellowship, he was Pastor Daly, but then I grew to know him as... Ayodele, because wow. I'm going to marry Ayodele, not mm. Pastor Dele. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Amen. I mean, what resonates with what both of you have said is that singles have no business going into a relationship if they have not discovered God yeah. and For their yourself. purpose. Yeah. Because it's within doing that that you will find and you will align yourself with yeah. who God wants you to align yourself with going forward. Yeah. Now, you've been married for nearly two decades. <laughs> Can I ask, what is the secret sauce? <laughs> because it's, it's one thing to stay married for one year, two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, and now nearly 20 years, so 19 years in marriage. So what's your secret sauce? Because a lot of us here are married, um, yeah, a lot of us here are married, I've been married 14 years. Wow. Yeah, and counting. 
Wow. So I would want to draw some inspiration from you. You know, maybe there's some sort of secret. You know, when people cook jello fries, some people they cook it differently. <laughs> yeah, they have their secret sauce, their secret spice. So what's your secret sauce? Well, uh, there's no secret, or it's an open secret. Let's put it that way. Hmm. Number one, um, like I said, Christianity, the Christian factor. Because why do I want to hurt someone? Why do I want to... Over the last 25 years, we've had people who've come to us for counseling, different couples, both home and abroad. And um, so when couples sit in front of us and we're, we're counseling with them, at times it takes six hours, seven hours. Husband will talk first, take two hours. Wife will take three and a half hours. And by the time they finish, we're looking at them and we're like, what exactly are they saying? And, and it's not that we are trying to pretend. Because what they call problems, we can't see it. I'm like, so what is the problem? That's after six hours of uh, ranting. So I'm like, what is the problem? <laughs> because I can't see the problem. Because what you are calling the problem is not the problem. You are problematizing what is not the problem. And, uh, you know, what has worked for us, number one, is that, like I said, it's a union between two Christians. The values of Christ, scripture, honesty, integrity. I have never cheated on my wife, and it will never happen. Because, look, that I don't do that it's not because I'm special or I'm superior to men that do it. You see, the love of Christ constrains me. There are some things I cannot do. And not because my wife is watching me. She does not even watch me. You can ask her. So it's not even a question whether she's checking my phone. She doesn't. It's not a question whether when I travel, she's calling someone to be watching me. She has never done that. Because by the time you start doing that, there's already a problem. <laughs> Because you are now doing it, trying to gag your wife or your husband. You are, you are not doing what you are doing because you have a personal relationship with the Lord. But you know it's also a judge. So what has worked is, number one, the fear of God. Number two, the fact that I love this woman. And, and love to me is, is to die. So, so at times there could be issues, like you said once in a while, and you want to get upset, but you hold yourself and you are like, it might not have come out the right way, but I know my wife, she wouldn't hurt me. You understand what I'm trying to say? Let's even say she says something. So I'll just allow her to calm down, maybe like a day or two after, I'm like, you know that thing that you said? You, but, but I won't be acting and say, how can you say that? And you are saying that to me. Because I know her, that even if, momentarily, she said it and it came out in a wrong way. That is not her heart. That's not her intention. So Bible said the heart of her husband doth safely trust her. I know she's not how to hurt me and, and, and she knows I'm not how to hurt her. So even if I express myself also in a way she doesn't really like or she knows that, look, it's just um, you know, whatever it is. So Again, let me reiterate those five factors again. Number one, the word of God. We, mm -hmm. we run this by the operating system of the word. Number two, we love one another passionately. Love is there. And everything about 1 Corinthians 13 is um, evident in our marriage. What love doesn't do, love is this, love is kind, love. Because why would you be kind to any other person and you are not kind to your wife? And why would you... <coughs> just want to talk to her in a way that is condescending. You just want to rubbish her. Why will a man wake up and all you just want to achieve that day is to rubbish your wife? To what extent? So why did you marry her? So you'll have done yourself a, a lot of good, possibly not to have married her, to have just saved that space. And of course, the fact that I also know we are also raising godly children. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted my daughters and my son, and they can testify. They've said it before. I think that was my last birthday when Todd Wani was talking. I, I want them to also grow up in an atmosphere where they see married models in Christ, yeah. where they see a father who loves their mom, who is committed to their mom, who is not having girlfriends, so that they can also see that in their generation, it is possible to have real men mm. who love their wives, who are very passionate about their marriages, and who are also very simple. Maybe another thing that has helped is, my wife will testify about this also. See, the only time you see me strong and whatever is when I'm behind the pulpit and ministry, I'm praying. But as a person, I'm a very simple person. That simplicity that is in Christ is all around me. I don't complain about anything. You can ask my wife, I don't complain about food. I don't complain about Whatever you put before me, I eat with singleness of heart, with gladness. If it's good, it's good. If it's average, fine, no problem. I mean, food is not really the issue. You understand? Because the reason why you are complaining about the food is also there's also a deeper issue you need to deal with. It's not that your wife also altogether we burn the food. <laughs> but if the food is burnt once in a while, just understand that there is an effort that went into it. Mm. Why not just see the better wow. side of things and just you know, love them regardless of their flaws so that your children can also see that this is doable, this is possible, so that in their generation they will remember. If ever there's something I'll remember about my father, I'm waiting for Toluani and Tolope to say that in the days to come is that dad loved mom. And that to me is great. I don't need anything more than that. Wow, wow. If I could add something <laughs> to that, I think with all that he's, he's said, from my own perspective, one other thing that has helped us this 19 years is learning to adapt. Mm. What do I mean by that? I think one of the mistakes or assumptions people have when they go into marriage is to change the other person. So you know this person is this way, and then you're hoping that after we get married, because you love me, you will start doing this. It's the beginning of heartbreak. Yeah. Breakfast. <laughs> it's the beginning of heartbreak. Learning to understand the personality of the person that you're with. Never comparing. And never assuming that this person, but when you do that, you know what happens, uh, Dr. Marachi. The person eventually changes over time as in adapt to what you want. But when you start off wanting to change them, you're not the Holy Ghost. Well, you're forceful. You don't have the power to do that. And it's wrong. Some ladies see guys that are like, that. he will change. That what? That ring will make him change? No. He's not going to change. That's controlling. That's controlling. So for me, people often ask me, how do you do it with PD? He's a very reserved person. I'm reserved too. I don't know why they say he's reserved. <laughs> Where but you, I, I'm reserved. Where you put me is where you meet me. <laughs> where you put me to is where you meet me. <laughs> I, I'm a reserved somebody. You can tell I'm very reserved. So, <laughs> but the but, truth. But, but the funny thing is that I, 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 I'm the very reserved person, but I'm the one also that ironically cuts across. 99% of the female friends, my wife, my, my wife's friend, 99% of them, I was the one that introduced them to her. That's what you do. You introduce and leave them. <laughs> so he's not a very, he's not a very, how, how's, what's that word now? Uh, it's short, short, he's, short, everything is short, 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 short. That's why he can't counsel for long. But now that he's counseling these hours, I'm like, ah. Things are changing in this life. Because earlier in those days, he would just be like, you know, Pastor Murray is an amazing counselor. I think you should sit down. She would address. But nowadays, he's, that's why I say people change, you know, over time. But I'm just saying that understanding our personalities have really helped us in these 19 years. I will not, I, and thank God he understands me. He's not trying to box me. He's not trying to make me him. I'm not trying to make him me. I'm a bird. Wow. I fly and go everywhere. Wow. Wow. I love energy. I love people around me. Sometimes I can, I can like my own company. Mm -hmm. But he's not so much that way. He loves people around too. He's a dove. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an ego. <laughs> he 
it stays at home. <laughs> or maybe it's a pigeon. <laughs> he has pigeon all. So, and that's why, you know, when people ask things like, we don't um, love the same thing, we're not attracted to the same things, we don't spend... Sister, sister don't worry, don't worry. Uh, I think... Questions. Okay, no, I don't yes. worry. Because before I told them, I said, I don't want to do this. And if I'm doing this, I talk 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But now, I think... Yeah. But we're stopping that, it because I'll I'm still saying. preach. <laughs> That's what I'm saying about personality. So right there, he asked me and said, can we cancel this? And I said, it's okay if that's what you want. Because I know him. It's not that point I'll start saying, ah, kilo de ashma cancel, ali cancel, ah, do you know that? That's not the point. That's not the time to start doing that. Whatever it was he was feeling at that time, he was only expressing how he felt about the mood. So it's about understanding timing as well. Understanding, ah, my darling. Understanding the timing to have conversations, to raise issues. Mm. I learned it in 19 years. Wow. Wow. I was telling one of the, one of the I think it was Dear Lord Home, and I will just share this story. It was a very funny story, honestly. We were about less than two years in marriage. I was pregnant, heavily pregnant for my, for my first daughter. And we were living in you know, one of those places in Karu where, um, yeah, most people know our story. We had a very humble beginning, very humble beginning. So we had this, I better pass my neighbor generator, you know, like outside and everything. And there was this Paloma they used to, we used to watch 7 p.m. You know, Paloma in here. I, it was like clockwork for me. Every 7 p.m. I would sit down and watch. And then this was glad day. There was no light. And I tried to use the pregnancy thing to like, oh, so I put on the generator now. I was, trying to play the card, use the card of being pregnant with my husband. Ah, I want to watch this thing, put on the gem for me. He said, no. Ah. I said, well, I, I want to, I, you know, I like watching this thing. He said, no, you are getting addicted. I said, hey, he's just a uh, paloma. Each one is addicted. This was two years in marriage. I wanted to use that card of, if you love me, you will do it. I'm pregnant. He did not bulge. I say, I'm going to the neighbor's house. You say, if you go out of that place to go, which neighbor to go and watch what? You won't believe that exactly 8 p.m. As the, I was hearing this from my neighbor's house. You know, the, the, yeah. you will know that they the finished. Yeah. My husband just went outside and put on the chair. <laughs> I said, Jesus. Lessons in life. You, <laughs> he said, I need to teach. You are becoming addicted to this paloma. I'm just trying to say that. Of course, he won't do that today. But understanding the timing. There's no gen in the UK. <laughs> there's no, the Lord has delivered us. There's no generator. You know, but at, at that moment, I was really upset. And, you know, I wanted to use the pregnancy thing to like, you know, but that's, you don't get things that way. You don't get things that way. Some ladies that are married here, you use sex. And like, you know, if you don't do this, you will not get this. Those things don't work. It's, 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 a, it's not a lie now. It's true. You see, the brothers agree with me. It's very true. You know, you see, so... that's why I said, maybe we are different. Because you have never done that. You see? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just a blessed woman. Wow. But I needed to add that part of understanding personalities. Yeah. And understanding that Change yes, is. is the most consistent thing in this life. We change. Mm. We grow. The PD I met was the PD that used to wear suspenders and did not used to have beard. Wow. That's the PD I knew in UI. But it's evolved. Look, uh, uh, beard gang. Transformed. He has been transformed. He grew up in Abelkuta. I grew up in Lagos. Wow. But now it's too short than I am. I can still do some Primark shopping. My husband can't even step into Primark. I'm like, man of God, don't forget where you came from. <laughs> if it's not doing I said, ah, well, you know, so but. <laughs> I used to think I don't like stress in this life. My husband does not like stress. Wow. So there are so many things he. Ah! Soft life. I claim I have soft life. No, no. PD is a soft life guy. 
No, no, let, let's balance that so people will know. What, what she meant by that is that I don't like going out. Uh, PD, I, you, won't you also like taste. Hmm. Yes, sir. I said FS Manga. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel, does he not have taste? End of discussion. Let, let, me, let me say something about that. Whenever I wear something, people always assume it's expensive. The truth is that I don't have anything expensive. I don't use expensive things. I, I, I. <laughs> like, 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 for instance, now, you will not believe this until I say it. The suit Jide bought for me was my very first suit in the UK. Every suit you see me wear is my tailor in Nigeria that made it. I didn't even buy it. But once I wear them, people just assume they're expensive. No, pity. Taste there is not so much about expensive. Money. Yeah. It's about so it's quality. About it's about style, class. <laughs> that, that's class. the issue. It called the tailor makes a suit. <laughs> that's the name of my tailor. I wear it, and people say class. <laughs> And that's because the tailor understands your class as well. Yes. yes wow, yes, amazing. Yes. Now, I want to open the floor to the audience. And I'm sure some people are itching to ask some questions. Um, so this is your moment now. Have we got any mic just to pass on? Um, yeah, we can pick up your questions as well. Yes, please. Oh, there's a hand up there. So please um, okay. keep your questions um, straight to the point. Mm -hmm. Respectable, please. Thank you. Okay. Yes, so could you qu quickly ask your questions? Oh, she wants to write the question. Okay, that's great. Is okay. anyone willing to ask a question? Oh, there's a hand up there, please. Mm. Apostle Nico, why are you by the door? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Okay, so there's this um, concern that I kind of have lived with as regards couples that you should not let, um, when you have a disagreement, you should not let the sun set. You know, try to resolve it that night before you sleep. Don't um, keep don't it. Sleep over don't, it. Yeah, don't sleep over it. But then, with what Pimo explained about um, understanding time to ask questions. Now, if you want to live by that to say, "Oh, I don't want to carry over an argument from today into tomorrow. I want to resolve it today." You understand? Uh, that's why you have some couples who would the wife will wake up the husband like 2 a.m. Let's let's discuss this issue. That's a, that's a very good wife. Yeah, before before daybreak. <laughs> Two a.m. And then, that's a good wife. <laughs> and then the issue of you know understanding when to ask the question comes in. It's a contrast. So how do no? It's not you a contrast. It? It's not a contrast because number one, uh, we're people of the word. We live by the word. One last place. Scripture is the final beta for us. We don't have any other thing we defer to other than the word of God. Scripture. Um, guides everything that we do. So, if the Bible says you should not wait until the sun is set in order for you to reconcile, that's the, just follow that as default. What she was talking about is in the context of every other thing, where maybe you need to ask, talk to your husband about something, but not in conflict resolution. If, if conflict is arising, it's always better to resolve them or resolve it, as the case may be, immediately. And like, like scripture says rightly, don't, why do you want to wait till the following day? How do you sleep with, knowing fully well that you and your wife, we are not, and you want to sleep on the same bed? You know, and that's why some women will wake you up at 2 a.m. to say, look, we need to talk. And, uh, you know, and uh, it's not that that will be the case every time because we also need to be practical. But we're saying as much as possible, make that the default you know, way of resolving things. And some other time, of course, you could talk in the morning, but that doesn't mean you, or if you can just try to resolve issues as they arise, it's better for everybody. If I could add to that, 
confession time, I've gone to bed several times without resolving conflict. <laughs> Not several times, a few times. And I will sleep. I will sleep. Pity is the one that will not sleep. <laughs> a few times, yes. That's, that's just the honest truth. And I'll be asking, and those few times... I'll and he will ask me, oh, they lost soon. You were able to soon, sleep? Most, man of God, I slept. I said, you were able to sleep? He's, he's the one that, you know, really wouldn't... Now, I'm not saying, you know, I'm the one that will go against scripture. <laughs> but they're just... And it depends on the time of the night you have the conflict. If the conflict is 9 p.m., and we did not res we'll reserve it in the morning, no. <laughs> no, what I mean is, I'm not going against scripture. You try and resolve it. But sometimes it's really, sometimes heated. Sometimes emotions are pent up. And you just want the person to like, so I might have resolved it in my heart. So it's not like I'm holding grudge and I'm like, tomorrow morning I want to, you greet to them, mm. no, I won't do that. But in the morning, and maybe because also, I'm a morning person. I'm an early riser. Mm. PD is the, is the night the owl. owl. He's the one that sleeps at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. I'm up 6.30, 5.30, 7, I'm up. So I'm, I'm an early riser. I'm a morning person. And when I wake up in the morning, it's a new day for me. I'm not carrying over, you know, what, was, what happened the day. You know, I'm just saying that sometimes it's not abnormal. So don't think that, you know, if you find yourself in that situation, you might just feel like, Oh, she's pent up. And understanding your wife also. Sometimes the wife is saying, I'm angry, leave me. And she really wants you to stay there and still be talking. <laughs> You're going away is not the solution. You are aggravating the solution by walking away. Even though she has said, I'm okay. She's not okay. <laughs> so understanding your wife, you understand what I'm saying, Marachi? Sometimes they're like, I'm fine. Mm. One syllable answer, you know she's not fine. It's not now you now say, she says she's fine, you now go. Uncle, don't go. <laughs> just stay there and sometimes they just need you to like ask again yeah. and ask even though she's still do try. Perseverance. Every man needs to learn that. You know, be patient. And you are like, kilo like it, like it. And now, just keep, are you okay? Can we talk about it? But if she's the type, maybe like me, like if I say I'm okay, I'm okay. And then we we'll talk about it the next morning, then it's fine. Honestly. So... You yeah. know, but wow. as much as possible, try Understand. to res resolve yeah. issues. Don't keep malice. Don't don't make it stay over. You know, boil over to the point where, because if things are not quickly addressed, it can fester. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. It now it's blows good. over. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's about understanding the personality of who you've married. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that way. And then some conflict. people don't resolve issues. It it it, it grows into resentment. Yeah. So. When they now begin to talk about it, you are wondering, ah, ah, this happened five years ago. They didn't deal with it hmm. when it happened. So it keeps building and then it builds resentment. You find couples say, I resent my husband. It's not that issue they came to meet you for that yeah. made them resent their husband. Yeah. Issues that they just swept under the carpet and they didn't deal with. Uh, it, it won't, you can't cover it. The, one day they will carry the carpet up. So it's always good to bring closure to it. Yes. Deal with the issue. And never refer to it again. Never. Yes. And don't yeah. invalidate your spouse's emotion, feelings. opinion, yeah. and feelings. Yeah. Don't. The fact that I, I'm, I'm an emotional person, PD is not an emotional person, you won't get him to cry. Mm. The only time I've seen him cry was early in marriage when we couldn't afford certain things. And that's the first and last time I've seen him cry. I've cried several times. Mm. You know, I remember when my mom, dad, and I cried. Yeah, he tried to console me, but I know that's the best he could do. He's not, he won't wear with me. Mm. <laughs> you get, but someone say, you will cry with you, not cry with me. He will not cry because he doesn't have the capacity cry, to be cry, crying with baby. you. Cry, cry, baby, not to see him. <laughs> wow, yeah. amazing. Are you guys enjoying this? Wow, wow. I've got two questions here. One is for PD. He says, are you really saying you've never fought? How is that possible? No, I never said so. Uh, sincerely, and even when I teach, I don't say so. What I said is that we do once in a while, but it's not an issue. And, and why it's not an issue is that, number one, it's expected. You know, when you have this anticipatory outlook and um, your, your, your conceptual framework, 
for, for marriage is as such that you understand the theories underpinning <laughs> the notions of marriage. We're still talking marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some things you just, you have that sense that look, once in a while, a guy will be a guy, once in a while a woman will be a woman, no matter how anointed, no matter how great. So, um, so because of that, but, but see, the issues are not the issues. What people do is to now make the issue the issue. You, you need to now try to, even when those things come up, you are like, okay, how do we resolve this? Yeah. And when, when, when there is law, there will always be a way to resolve this. Because at times, all you need to do is just to hug your wife and hold her and just say, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hmm? I'm sorry. Do you still love me? I'm sorry. You know, just do some of those baby things. But if some of us say, yeah, 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 no, please. Raising your voice is not going to help matter. As a matter of fact, one of the ways, one of the reasons why you raise your voice is that it's a sign of weakness. Very strong people don't raise their voices. They just make their point. It's weak people. And you have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Do you know who I am? You don't need to. You don't need all that. So when issues arise, resolve them. And make sure you, like I always tell my wife, once we get through with this, we learn. It will never happen again. And that's the philosophy. Yeah. Okay, we've been through this. We've learned from this. Yeah. So let's move to the next thing. It's not that we now stay there. And I say, hey, that was what you did four years ago. That was what you did in Adwekiti. That was what you did in Kutuwenji. You know, you don't need all that. And by the time you are still doing that, you have not moved on. And the beauty of marriage is that you need to learn to move on. Mm. So it's not that we don't have issues, but we don't make those issues issues. We resolve them, we move on, we learn whatever we need to learn, and we make sure we don't repeat that class again. A lot of people are repeating the class. You, you've not graduated. You are still in primary school, and you are 20 years old. We are worried. Um, can I just yes. put something practical yeah. around that question? Please do. <clears throat> And I think I shared it at the Babes Redefine meeting we had. For those that were there, you probably remember. I think one of the, that I remember, heated argument PD and I have had happened in this UK. And that was the early days when we first came. Now I'm just gonna say this, probably to help some couple, couples that are in the house. Leaving Nigeria was not a big deal to me initially because I felt I'd done this. I'd moved with PD. We moved from Abuja to Lekki, Lekki to Maryland. Come on, what's UK? We can do this. Let's go. And of course, I got a lot of encouragement. Apimo is you. When you enter UK like this, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Nothing. No stress. You'll be okay. So I allowed that and I just said, okay, let's go. But I won't lie to you. The first few months was hard for me. It was hard for me. He would go to work, to school. The children would go to school. And I felt like my life was meaningless. Like, what am I doing here? Like, what, what, what's, my, what's my assignment here? Was it like I didn't hear God when God said we're moving? Yes. I knew what he said I was coming here to do. But those first few moment, months of settling in, and everything just seemed like very unfamiliar. It was like taking a fish out of water. I'm like, what's going on here? This is not me. My house is quiet. I'm like, no way. I can't do this. You know? And one of those days, we had a heated argument. My children probably would remember, because that's the first time they would hear us really have a heated argument. And I remember, PD, permit me to say this. I said it to him. I said, why did you take me from Lagos? Why did you bring me here? You should have left me in Nigeria. It hurt him so badly because he knew we had had this conversation. We prayed. We knew what God said, but I was emotional. It was pent up emotions. And I was just like, what's, what's, what's happening here? I don't even think church has started. No, I think church has started. I can't remember. And I was just like, I'm not even doing this thing. I just want to go to Nigeria. Let me just be, I don't know why Nigeria was calling me. I didn't even understand. <laughs> you understand? I'm like, 
of course, I hadn't met a lot of wonderful people like a lot of you Alero. here. Sir? I said, Mommy Alero. <laughs> a lot of wonderful people, honestly. Wonderful, amazing people. But I'm just making it practical. Mm. That it's not like we don't have our moments. Yeah. But then we resolved it. I apologized because I knew that was... Number one, apart from hurting him, I was speaking the wrong thing. Mm. And the Lord had to tell me that the reason you have not settled is because you've not accepted that this is where you are meant to be. He has accepted it. The children had accepted it. I was the only one still going. I was still looking at Egypt. <laughs> and I was thinking of the cucumber and the garlic. Mm. Now, I'm being practical here. And the moment I released it in my mind and I said, this is where we're meant to be. I know what God has said to us. I began to flourish. Yeah. Amen. That was the first and last time, honestly. Wow. You know, but I needed to, so, so people don't think that we are, we are made from heaven, that we don't used to fight. We, he upsets me, I upset him. If we don't like the same thing, we we'll upset each other. And we we recently and moved. we don't like the same thing at all. We don't like it. And we, it's not a problem. We recently moved houses. Oh, we've had arguments over this should be here, that should not be there. Mm. Yeah, like, we know. But as you grow in love, that's why I said for me, love in faces. Yeah. You understand sometimes, and I've learned with him, don't argue. And as you grow in love, you when you are moving as you tell your wife, where do you want this to be? <laughs> <laughs> so you now learn to say, excuse me, ma. So do you want <laughs> Is that where you want it? It's got peace of mind. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I know we, we can stay here from morning till night, but we have lots of questions. And Pimo and PD, please, I would want you to speak to these briefly yeah. because there are so many questions. I think they are pet it's pertinent that you touch on these questions. Um, one of them is around resolving. You talked about, I think you alluded to it when you spoke earlier. So how do I resolve sex appetite? I do love my love husband, but I don't have a huge sex appetite. And this really makes him not happy. And I try sometimes, but I would, it's not really what I want. Okay. Okay. And she says, please tell me what to do. Let and please briefly, because we have loads uh, of yeah, interesting yeah, questions as well. We even need to go now. Um, <laughs> we'll do part two, don't worry. So I think what I promise is that uh, Sister Alero and Dr. Marachi, uh, within the first uh, quarter of next year, trusting God I will have moved to our venue. Let's do this. So that it's, because I could see my heart that people learn from this. It was my friend, Pastor Bolajito, who would have said this, that he's tired of something. He's tired of begging married people to have sex. I'm begging singles not to have sex. <laughs> it's, is it not funny that you are begging married people to have sex? And as in that, you are begging singles not to. It's all, all, also all about understanding. And let me say this also, which is a, one of the factors. It might not be the factor in this regard, but I'm also, uh, you know, as a pastor and as a researcher now, try to bring forth some predisposing factors. It's not everybody. Most of the couples we know who are struggling with sex after marriage were having sex before marriage. Yeah. It does appear that once you begin to have sex before marriage, after marriage, you will struggle. Because number one, you've seen it all. Then you now start, especially when you have multiple sex partners. Can I appeal to the ladies here in the name of the Lord that a guy sleeping with you is not a sign of love. As a matter of fact, he might be using you. Because people think sex is love or love is sex. Or, or some other guys feel once we marry, his sex will be having 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's that impression also in the heart of guys that ah, all day or more Having waited this long, we'll just be firing night and day. <laughs> you realize that it's not like that. And, and of course, movies are not helping matter. You know, you know, you've seen movies. People's just rushing, remove clothes, throw it there. And a lot of us are having that at the back of our mind. 
And once a guy is not doing that, you think it's not normal to quickly rush in, remove clothes, throw shoe, throw this one. <laughs> Let me tell you, 99% of the time in real life, we're not talking about Netflix. We're talking about real life. It's not like that. So if that's if that, see, so for those who are not having issues, it's also about talking about it. Why? There must be a reason. If if the guy is active and the lady is not active, or vice versa, the first thing I want to say is that talk about it. There must be something. Don't gloss over it. Why do we do this? Because my wife and I, we had to talk about it at some point also in our story. And we had to now draw a line of best fit. Okay, these are the things we don't like, these are the things we like. Okay, how can we? How can, and literally to compromise there and there. Because I, I, again, love. The sex is not the issue, it's love. If it's done in a heart of love and with a heart of understanding, you will realize that there is a way you can even manage that without it necessarily becoming an issue. Because at the end of the day, the marriage is not sex. Sex is not a marriage. The marriage is more than sex. Sex is an important aspect of the marriage. You can still focus on other aspects too while you are still working on this aspect. What I'm saying in essence is that nothing should produce a tension in a marriage. There's nothing you cannot deal with. So I want to appeal to that couple to, to have a conversation around it. And if having a conversation is not going to help, seek help. Go and see Dr. Amaraji. Sit with her. There are Christian sex therapists now. I'm talking about Christians yeah. who sit you down and they walk you through everything. Seek help. And don't forget also that the Bible talks about gifts of healings. It's gifts. So if anointing is not going to work, God also created medicine. If medicine is not going to work, God created herbs. Have you seen God, the prophet, also born in herbs for someone? If, if that, the same Paul that healed many people told Timothy to take wine, it, because it's gifts. You see, that wine also, God put something in it that could also heal the tummy upset of Timothy. What I'm trying to say is that if you are not receiving that help in your conversation, seek professional help. There's nothing wrong with that. The world is broader now. And, but make sure you are talking to Christian counselors, those who also have the same values in Christ, and let them look at it. And if that is not going to work also, look for medical solution. But don't just sit around it and, be, you know, because you don't want it to become an issue. At least try something. Try and resolve it. I think also probably, just to touch on that, it could also be the person's mindset about sex. Yeah. What is your mindset about sex? Is it just an act? So those are the things, as long as it's not a medical condition, because some people really do have medical condition, and sometimes it could be you also reacting to certain things emotionally. Maybe it could be your hormones, it could be anything. Yeah. So, but sex is an integral part of your marriage, mm -hmm. so don't gloss over it, you have to address it. It yeah. is, don't say, Sean Jenny, it's his food. <laughs> Let me say that in English, you know, we say it in English, is it food, is it food? You know, ladies, we like to say that a lot. Is it food? It is food. So please, it is an integral part. It is your spiritual responsibility to actually have sex with your spouse. So if it is not happening that way, now libido might be different in terms of what people need. So that's why you now seek medical help. How do I match up? How do I understand my wife that I don't, we are not on the same level? But to gloss over it and spiritualize it, no, 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 no. Seek help. It, sex is, the, is a very spiritual thing. Amen. Wow. Wow. I'm so sorry. I'm to I've been told that my time is up. Wow. But, um, yes. Let's take one more question. One more question. And uh, that will be it. I'm a woman under authority. Okay. I think another so, thing is the, uh, the questions can be sent to us to and you. we will try and Okay. So this, this one Without touches on... Mail or something. This one touches on children. Okay. So this one is asking, is it, is it right for the children to settle the differences between parents? We understood that parents sometimes have favorite children, and it's that right? Is How do you balance child? right? I don't know that. That's why I wanted you to address no, this a question. a child should not oh. set to Could be. fight yeah. for a parent. That is um, it's an anomaly. It's an anomaly. And you are, you are, you are already giving them responsibilities no. beyond their age. 
it will backfire. Because that is, you are you're the one that's supposed to train up a child, not a child training you. Yeah. And it's, it's very wrong. Please seek help or seek for help otherwise. And don't involve your children in your marital issues. You are, you are programming them for what is not good. So I'll just it's, say it's one of the things also that I usually counsel people who are in abusive marriages and who, who try to cover it up and under the disguise of I'm doing it for my children. No, you're harming that child more. Because now that child is not growing up in a conducive environment. That child is not growing not up true. to learn, to understand what it means to love. So by the time a child is getting involved in settled issue, settling issues, then there's a big problem. There's a big problem. But it's not a problem that cannot be addressed. Because those, the family is the first institution God created to raise children. Not school, not outside, not friends. The family system is the perfect system God has created to Teach children what life is, what marriage is, what love is. And so you're meant to portray that. And I know that there are people who have very um, challenging marriages. Some have abusive spouses. Seek help, please. Don't cover these things. Don't, don't, cover it. don't, don't over-spiritualize it. Seek help. And if you need to separate for a while, sometimes it's needed. I preach it. Especially If you need to. Once physical it's physical abuse, abuse sometimes there are some really... Deranging emotional abuse, Pastor, uh, Pastor Marachi, yeah, Pastor now, yeah. you know, can testify to that as well. You know, so all we're saying is seek help. Marriage, don't try and do it all by yourself. Don't try and cover and feel like, ah, what will the pastor say? What will they say? They will say, I'm not. Seek help, please. And if this question, I'm really concerned, if it's written by a child, if you don't mind, please see me after service or see me some other time or reach out to me, please. And if it's a parent that wrote that, I really would love to see that parent as well. Amen. Thank you. Um, considering the fact that we, um, the world is going through a lot of economic ups and downs, upheavals, how would you speak to people who have to navigate challenging times financially? And I think wow. that will be my last question. And if you've got any advice for singles and people who are married in the house, okay. please do that. Thank you. Um, the, the, my advice to, for those is to take advantage of all the things we are put in place in church here. Look, our expressions, enterprise, which one again? Career. Academy, and now we're starting media, by uh, side Pimoy and some other people are trying to put together legal and all that. We already have more than enough resource in the house, or resources. You know, at times when I speak from my heart, people think I'm against what they're doing. All I'm saying is that there are some jobs in the UK that will not necessarily make you to escape the living hand, from hands to mouth lane. And that's why we have put all these things together in church, for people to be trained in sectors where you can get corporate jobs in the UK, and your earning cannot be less than 45,000 pounds per annum. Now that they even want to increase the benchmark, you know, for people bringing their spouses and all that. So we have it there. Let's take advantage of That's why those trainings are going on. Envoy is a different kind of church. It's a church that we are not just interested in your spiritual well-being. We're also interested in your career development. I have people here, well, like some of my friends, look at Christy Cole. Christy, I can see Christy there. And some other people who are doing their uh, PhDs all over the University of Leicester, the Montfort University. It was as we met and we became friends. Even their professional uh, you know, career path as academics came alive. I remember meeting Christy. Christy did not even know there were opportunities to lecture. He didn't even know there was a community where, as researchers then, when I was doing my PhD, we could help one another and, and all that. And it was because we met on the platform of Envoy. Yeah, she came to church and we got to meet. And I'm like, oh, this is happening, that is happening. And before you know it, just like that. Now, Christy is a lecturer. She's had almost two years lecturing experience now. If she finishes her PhD now and she wants to continue to lecture, it was just a conversation. So at times, these things are not difficult. It's just because people don't know. And, but when you are now in a house where we know, and we have even put structures in play, very, very soon now, this house is going to produce members of, uh, is it parliament, they call it? Yeah. For, for Leicester, we're already working on that. 
We don't just want to take over spiritually. We also want to take over politically. So you see us romancing with the former Lord Mayor. It's not just that Lord Mayor. <laughs> we're, we're doing, as a matter of fact, we won't have a meeting tomorrow. We are doing something so that we can position our people. So by the time we come, a member of this church will be the mayor of this city. Because we're already working at it. That's why we're having EMR roundtable. Those things are, we're not just having those things as ends in themselves. They are means to an end. The same thing in academia. Look at all those people Dr. Hussein is helping. In this last set also, most of the envoy members had distinction. Those who just finished now. Everybody that told me they finished all had distinction. You know, and, and it, they are crediting it to Dr. Hosheni. They are also coming to do their Thanksgiving. You saw when the other ones did their Thanksgiving. Now we have people, we have, we've trained, I personally have trained over 2,000 people to be scrum masters, to be pro product owners. Go on LinkedIn. You see people thanking me all over the world every time. So I attended, I only listened to one of Pastor Dele's, you know. So why are we doing all this? We are doing all this because we want people to come into the critical sector of UK, where you are guaranteed job. Anything that has to do with digital roles in the UK is where the money is. Because that is where UK is disadvantaged. And, uh, you know, so it's good. Come in through care, come in through support, do all that, but don't stay there. And the only thing that can make you to stay there is that if you have plan to own one. And that is why, by the grace of God, next year we're also bringing someone. We're already concluding that to come and train people about how to own a care home and how to own a support home. And for those of us who are working there now, the good thing about your working there is that you already have two years' experience. One year, it counts for something. So that by the time you are taught how to put together your paper to own one, it's not going to be a problem. You have the requisite experience and whatever. And that is how, and, and again, this season of harvest, that is what we've been talking about. Look at when Barista O.K. Thompson was leading us this morning, the confession I sent to the platform, the plowman will overtake the reaper. We are preparing ourselves for this because the truth about the matter is, is as a member of this house, I was saying it last week, don't, don't do a loose grip. There is no reason why you cannot optimize your, your, the opportunities in the UK. The harvest truly is plenteous for the laborers of you. Okay, just in conclusion, because of time, to talk to on the finance part, particularly with respect to marriage and the approach, the practical approach. Uh, the truth is, we, we go through our down times in marriages. During your marriage, you go through your down time. You go through challenging times. There will be financial challenges. We had ours early in marriage. In the 19 years, we've had a few financial challenges too as well. But one of the things you have to remember is understand why you are together while you're going through that challenge. Manage your emotions as women. There's a tendency to want to have outbursts because your spouse is going through a difficult time financially. The important thing is learn to manage your emotion as a woman and possibly find someone other than your spouse to speak with that can encourage you, that can guide you when you're going, because there will be times you have those outbursts, you want to have those outbursts. Rather than have those outbursts with your spouse, find a friend. Speak with the friend. This is how I'm feeling. It's okay to feel that way. We're meant to have come out of this financial stuff. He's yet to get a job. The bills are piling up. Or for ladies where you are in that season where you are the one footing the bill. And they've told you on social media, you should not foot the bill. <laughs> so you need to apply wisdom. Allow the Holy Spirit guide you. There are seasons when we got married, I was earning 17000 We lived on that for months. And when the breakthrough came, it was 100000 every month. How do you compare 17000 to 100000 That came through him. So the thing is, you would go through financial challenges. There will be ups and downs. But go through it together. Don't, don't now use that season and then receive advice and say, as long as it's not a lazy spouse and it's not one who just likes to feed on other people. No. Once you know your spouse is hardworking and he's just going through a seasonal downtown, downtime, then support is important. Prayer and covering is important. You know, and just telling yourself, this will pass. For those who came into UK, I know that the challenge is the bills, and it has caused a lot of wreck in marriages. But you need to hold your, hold your hands together and walk through it together. Honestly, there's nothing insurmountable. There's absolutely nothing if you are together. The reason why you don't surmount it is because one person is thinking this way, the other person is thinking the this way. The power of agreement.
power of agreement, power you can actually overcome, you know, whatever challenges. Let's appreciate them.